black sites around the world. These people, that was are we supposed to believe about uh, what Trump is involved with, with Putin and what they're doing? Uh, so who pushes this Russia phobia story? It's pushed by the Democratic Party bosses, the Democratic National Committee, the, um, the national security state, but it is ostensibly against Trump, but is really directed at those in the anti-war movement, against those in organizations, movements like Black Lives Matter, against the anti-pipeline movement, like the, the COVID. I find whatever. Yeah. Against all, against all the movements against corporate America, like Occupy movement. And in the media, we find that this movement reflected in the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, and SNBC. They want us to believe that our, elect our electoral process is clean and that the only way a fascist like Trump was elected was due to foreign intervention. Which is another way of saying that they're not respecting our right to vote the way that we wanted to vote. Even though I don't know how many of you voted for Trump, but he won the election. Well, according to the way they set it up, he won the election. So. Uh, they're trying to say it's illegitimate. It kind of reminds me of what Nixon said about Chile when they elected Allende. Well, if they're going to elect that guy, then they don't deserve to have the right to vote. He said something like that, right? I forget exactly what. It was either him or Kissinger said that. <clears throat> so, they, you know, in the Clinton Trump campaign, tried to paint Trump as being some, a buddy of this Darth Vader or Putin. Uh, they hit the accusing Russia of election interference jumped in the high gear when Li WikiLeaks was going to, about to reveal the 20 or 30,000 emails and from the Kit Clinton campaign from Podessa that it shows how the Democrats manipulated the primary election so that Bernie Sanders would not win. <laughs> now this, uh, what is this, it's um, called the veteran intelligence professionals for sanity have said that in their analysis that this leak, this hacking of the Democratic Party emails was not a hacking, it was a leak by a guy who had worked for in the Bernie Sanders campaign when he saw the degree in which the DNC was working to make sure that Bernie Sanders was not going to get the, the votes, the, the delegates, that he leaked all these emails to show. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they say. Uh, and this um, Russiagate picked up after Clinton lost the election. It's become a new weapon for the U.S. rulers with making more and more unfounded allegations to divert people from seeing the real dangers that we face. The U.S. military buildup against Russia and China, the U.S. war against Syria, the war threats the U.S. makes against Iran and maybe off and on against uh, North Korea, the fact the U.S. is not doing anything about all the social problems that people face in this country. And, when a higher and higher yeah. percent of the U.S. population gets more and more poor every year. No, um, that's the Italian. I have uh, hold the on, sir. Please yeah. hold on. Okay. It's really the the Democrats are using this now, this Russia gate and Russia phobia for the elections in November because. They don't really have anything to offer the Democrat voters. <laughs> well, they don't have anything. We're not going to say we're not going to have a jobs program. We're not going to have push for national health insurance. We're not. They just say no. Trump is an agent of Russia. We got to control and get this guy out. This is urgent that we do this. It's just all Trump and Russia. Um, so right at this point right now, it is this uh, this 
anti-Trump movement is dominated by the, the right wing wing of it, the Democratic Party bosses wing of it, and the national security state wing of it, not by the, the peoples, the mass of peoples. One way we can tell that is that we, we see all these progressive Democrats bending over following what these DNC people are saying about Russia Gate and Russia phobia. They're repeating it like Bernie Sanders is. Before they wouldn't, I don't think he would have been. Bernie Sanders is not talking about how Clinton stole the election from him. He's talking about how allegedly Russia stole it from Clinton. Um, but he's not the only one. We don't see the uh, the right wing wing of the anti-Trump movement taking up the issues of, well, you know, we got to oppose the wall on the border with Mexico. We have to get some climate change agreement. We have to make some agreement with Russia, which happens to be the other nuclear superpower. They're not saying those things. Well, let me see. Uh, there was a recent article that two newspapers that pushed this Trump-Putin collusion, the uh, New York Times and Washington Post, which they go overboard on it. Sort of like S MSNBC. What is that, that woman who has the show? With this like 24-7 anti-Trump, Russiagate. Rachel. Rachel Moon. Uh, yeah, it's sort of like watching Fox News. So it's like they're the Democratic Party's version of Fox News. The New York Times ran an article September 20th, which I guess last two, last Thursday, or last week. It's called the the plot to subvert an election, unraveling the Russia story so far. In the article, it says. What we now know with certainty, the Russians carried out a landmark intervention. That's what this article says, it's, if you want to read it. It's in the New York Times, September 20th, this plot to subvert an election. But you go into the story, it get, you get to a point in the story buried underneath these headlines, and it says, quote, no public evidence has emerged showing that Trump's campaign conspired with Russia. That's a, like most of these stories, when you get down into the story, they say, well, actually, you know, there's no doubt that Russia did it, but we actually we don't have any evidence to show that, but just believe us. Um, when you, so you get down to it, these stories about Russiagate and Russia collusion are no more, they have the same degree of accuracy as the stories that came out about Trump not having a U.S., I mean, Obama not having a U.S. birth certificate. They're just made up. There are other, there's a myriad of other nonsense stories about Trump and Putin that maybe some of you forgot, like, Putin has a video of Trump peeing on with prostitutes in a hotel in Russia. Which you still haven't seen that video, right? It's still with um, They had the story about how Russia hacked into the Vermont electric grid. You remember that story? That's happened. And they had a Mueller filing set charges against 12 alleged intelligence officers. Remember that? That hap he just happened to do that right before Trump was going to meet with Putin. What were they charged? Yeah, they were indicted. And they had to indict somebody in something like that, you don't need any evidence. And it does not need to contain evidence. That's supposed to come out in a trial. But since these 12 Russians are in Russia, there's not going to be a trial. But it's still, it's still fed to us like these are truth, they, these are, uh, <clears throat> this is real. Now Russia, I mean, I don't know if you read this in the U.S. news, 
that Putin offered to allow U.S. agents to travel to Russia to observe the questioning of the 12 suspects that the department indicted last Friday, for, well, this is from a quote from a newspaper, for alleged interference in the 2016 election. But the U.S. didn't respond to that offer by Putin. <clears throat> I know, uh, uh, these, uh, you probably remember how they, they, they all the, the pro-democratic party media was so up in arms that Trump had a private meeting with uh, Putin. Uh, John Brennan, who was the former head of the CIA, said that this meeting with Putin was treasonous. And he said that Trump was wholly in the pocket of Putin. And his performance exceeds the thresholds of high crimes and misdemeanors. But they won't tell you, I don't know if you've read it anywhere else, yes. that the first time that Trump met with Putin was 18 months after he became elected. Now Bush and Obama both met with the head of Russia six months, their first six months of their office. But that wasn't, I guess no one said that was treasonous when they did it. Another story I read was like in the Washington Post that came out in 2016 that said, uh, Russian hackers targeted Arizona election system. This was before the election. Said so the, the FBI alerted Arizona officials in June that Russians were behind the assault on this election system in the state. And then when you read out down in the story, it said the Bureau describes the threat as credible. On a, on a scale of one to 10, we give it a scale of eight. Then down further in the story, it says, quote, it turned out that the hackers had not compromised the state system or even any county system. They had, however, stolen the username and password of a single election official in Gila County. Gila. This is Gila. like a lot of these stories that you hear about. Gila County. What? Gila County. Gila, okay. We also heard the story about 17 agencies, that, uh, intelligence agencies that, what were they, I forget what they said they did, that uh, Trump was colluding with Putin, but uh, that had to be retracted by the New York Times later as being false. Now, some, if you want to really read about, you know, exposing a lot of this garbage about the Russia Gate and the Russia phobia, if you read Glenn Greenwald on The Intercept, or Stephen Cohen, who is a scholar on Russian Soviet affairs, or Real News Network, or Consortium News, or the WSWS website, or 21st Century Wire, or some other people, these are people that all analyze all this information about this Russiagate stuff and show how it's not true. This organization, federal, I mean, uh, Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity, uh, Jack Matlock, the U former U.S. Ambassador to Soviet Union, Craig Murray, the former British Ambassador to Uzbekistan, They've all uh, written things showing how all these, there's no basis for all these allegations about Russian interference. And these people who, who complain about Russian interference, I mean, they don't complain about the interference that goes on with all the gerrymandering of districts all around the country. They don't complain about the hundreds of thousands of people in this country who have been denied the right to vote most of them black and poor people, they don't complain about, they don't try to get rid of the electoral college, which as maybe, I don't know, I read it, I didn't really think about it, but it's true, that in this century, 40% of the elections, the national presidential elections in this country were won by a minority candidates. There were five elections this century. And only three were won by a majority of persons who won the popular vote. <clears throat> These people who are on this uh, Russia phobia bandwagon, they don't complain about Democrat superdelegates. They don't complain about corporations buying 
elections. They don't complain about war criminals not, not being tried for what they've done, like Kissinger or Rumsfeld. And they don't complain about the Supreme Court interference in the national elections like they did in 2000. But they will complain about this Trump-Russia collusion. Hey, you know there's a speaker. So also we should question, is it really true that Trump is friendly to Russia? There was a meeting where the Pompeo went to the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and, and explained that the Trump administration has imposed uh, 213 sanctions on Russia. The U.S. has expelled 60 <laughs> Russian intelligence officers since uh, Trump became president. That the, U that the U.S. now provides more military aid to Ukraine and Georgia than Obama did. So, Yeah, give me a minute when I get everybody's up. It's also, I mean, none, none of these things, I mean, it doesn't make sense to say if uh, Trump is somehow friendly with Putin that he is more aggressive against Russia than Obama was. It also says that Russia, uh, Putin had made an offer that included mutual assurance, uh, assurances be, of non-interference in elections from in a joint declaration at their Helsinki summit, but the U.S. refused to uh, go along and sign that. The, he, that Putin recommended a, quote, joint measures to prevent use of cyberspace to destabilize internal pro political processes including elections. Russia also offered uh, Trump that they, that they make an agreement giving mutual assurances that each side would not attack critical infrastructure in the other's country, including hospitals, power grids, and banks. However, President Trump turned down the offer. Now, who are some of the um, progressives in the resistance, this anti-Trump resistance, probably the most important one is Bernie Sanders, who on July 19th introduced a resolution to protect, it's called Resolution to Protect, Ameri protect American Democracy from Russian Meddling introduced by Bernie Sanders. This is from Bernie Sanders' website. It says, Bernie Sanders introduced a resolution to force members of the Senate to go on record in accepting well, the assessment of the U.S. Out. intelligence community that Russia interfered in the 2016 presidential election and the looming threat of Russian interference in this year's midterms election. This is, this is straight from Bernie Sanders. Uh, if you read any of these progressive magazines like Mother Jones or the, or the progressive newspaper or even The Intercept, they have all joined this on this anti-Russia bandwagon. So have progressive news things like KPFT, KPFJ in California, National Public Radio, The Nation, Democracy Now!, They've all uh, gone along with this anti-Russia campaign, blaming Russian interference. Even a group Refuse Fascism says that Trump is illegitimate, meaning he's not really elected. Even the People's World, the former paper of the pro-Soviet Communist Party USA, goes along with this. It's also worth remembering that when the, the, the military budget this year, for next year, that uh, Trump proposed like $700 billion for the military budget, 
and it wasn't enough for the Democrats, <laughs> and the Democrats raised the military budget by like $80 billion, which is more than the military budget of the total military budget of Russia. <clears throat> So how is this, uh, if I get to this, uh, how we're seeing this new McCarthyism in the internet and the censoring of anti-corporate media news, which is really the, the focus of it, to close off our access to news that is not controlled by the U.S. corporations. There was, I read an article called uh, Extremist Content and Russian Disinformation Online, which was about, a, oh, that was a hearing in the U.S., the Senate Judiciary Committee, which is the same ones we saw yesterday, I think. Um, they had Feinstein, Diane Feinstein, yeah, she was there yesterday. In this, she said that uh, Russia sought to sow discord and amplify racial and social divisions among election, American voters in the election. Chuck Grassley, Grassley, is he the head of it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He was the one who, he said that uh, Russia helped promote protests against police violence in Ferguson, Baltimore, and Cleveland. <laughs> that Russia, quote, spread stories of, of, about abuse of black, of black Americans by law enforcement. Say that was only a Russian plot. <laughs> I guess maybe they'll say, what's his name? The fact that Ron McDonald is dead is, is a Russia, Russian fake news story. He said that, that, he state that Russia spread stories about abuse of black Americans by law enforcement, that these ads are clearly intended to worsen racial tensions and possible, possibly violence in those cities. This they're trying to blame on Russia. <coughs> And any, any movements to protest by blacks against killing of blacks by cops is a, uh, they're agents of Russia. <laughs> Facebook had said it would combat, quote, fake news by partnering. They're going to, the Facebook is now going to partner with the National Democratic Institute and the International Republican Institute. They, both of them were basically set up by the CIA in the 1980s. The head of the National Dem... Speaker Yeah, yeah. speak it up. Uh, went out a long time ago. No, no. speaker's still working. Oh. The National Democratic Institute is, is, is run by sec the former Secretary of State, Madeleine Albright. Albright. Remember her? Who yeah. said, I think that, you know, killing a half a million children in Iraq because of sanctions is worth the price. And the Republican one who was head up, the, the International Republican Institute was, set up, was uh, headed up by John McCain, <coughs> the late hero of us all, I think. <laughs> now this is what Facebook is, who hey, Facebook is going to partner with to combat fake news. And these two organizations are going to be joining with the Atlantic Council, which is a NATO organization. And these are what's going to determine for Facebook what's fake news. National uh, Also with Google, it says that James Mattis, the Defense Secretary, collaborates closely with Google. And a group, Google representatives have attended White House meetings on an average of at least once a, a week since 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 Obama got elected, Obama. So what is the impact on the, uh, what have they been doing on the internet so far? 
I don't know if you if you look at Facebook tried to remove the page uh, Venezuela analysis, which has news about Venezuela that's contrary to what the U.S. says. Facebook had tried to remove the Telesaur English, the news that comes out from Venezuela. And I think Google is trying to censor Telesaur now. I don't know if any of you look at Telesaur, but I noticed about two days ago, if I put Telesaur in the subject line, it just says this website's not secure and they don't let me access it. Now it says also that, that Israel submitted uh, 158 requests to Facebook for removing Palestinian content from the Facebook things. And uh, Facebook has removed both, most of them. Yeah. The fourth thing I examined that's like Venezuela analysis, Telesur, and Telesur on Google, yeah. not just on Facebook, about Israel removing uh, Things showing the telling the truth about what they do with Palestinians. The fourth thing is this uh, Facebook shut down this No Unite the Right to DC right event, which was a Facebook group to get people to protest uh, the right wingers when they came to uh, Washington, DC to protest last summer. <coughs> Facebook said that this people organizing against this right wing protest. They could tell they said they had coordinated inauthentic behavior, which is what, how Facebook determines what's fake news. They say it's, uh, it's not authentic. Twitter has recently suspended the accounts of Daniel McAdams, who was, a, who was the executive editor of the Ron Paul Institute. And it has suspended the account of Scott Horton, the editor of anti-war website. YouTube has shut down multiple Syria-based accounts. And they enforced uh, YouTube has blacked out the uh, postings by the Syrian state. The Russia Today, and the RT, the news uh, agency, has been forced to register as a foreign agent, which, you know, BBC, which is obviously a foreign agent of Britain, they're a foreign agent, they're directly, they're directly funded by the British government. RT News is not funded, I think, directly by the Russian government. BBC does not have to register as a foreign agent. Uh, Facebook has shut down the the Facebook group Occupy London. In August, Facebook removed nearly 650 Iran-linked accounts. Uh, Facebook shut down the website called Black Blacktivist, which is uh, post things about uh, police brutality against blacks. And furthermore, then uh, Google has changed, they say they changed their algorithms, as they say, to make it sound like it's somehow scientific and mathematical. So that a lot of you, when you do a search on some subject, they make sure you don't find these particular websites. And these websites say they're, the hits they get from people on the internet has gone down a great deal since Google is basically pushing them off their search list. These websites uh, have very good news. Counter to the corporate news, like the World Socialist uh, website, WSWS, Black Agenda Report, Global Research, Consortium News, Alternet, Democracy Now!, Truth Out, Police the Police, Free Thought Project, Counterpunch, WikiLeaks.com, Truth Dig, MediaMatters.org, Common Dreams, The Intercept, all of them have been uh, affected by this Google kind of removing them from coming up when you search something. 
So what we're seeing here is basically the U.S. government, work, the, the national security agencies of the U.S. government working with news sources that we rely on to, to limit what we see. It's pretty directly government censorship of the news. Um, now, what, if you wanted to read more about the new McCarthyism going on and the Russophobia, besides the people I mentioned, you know, the Aaron Mate of Real News Network has um, done several articles and programs um, interviewing people who are pushing the Russiagate story and showing out that what's, uh, what they're saying is not doesn't have any evidence behind it. You can also find it in a lot of this in the Consortium News. WSWS has a lot. A woman called Caitlin Johnstone, Stephen Ledman, Lindeman, Stephen Cohen, Noam Chomsky, 21st Century Wire, RT, Sputnik, Black Agenda Report, Paul Craig Roberts have all been writing about this McCarthyism this new Russia phobia. There's also uh, Alan McLeod who writes in articles in the FAIR, the Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. The recent one is called The Utility of the Russia Gate Conspiracy. New McCarthyism allows corporate medias to tighten the grip. Also, you can see it in uh, Fox News. This is Tucker Carlson, who's a pretty right-wing guy, but he has uh, also had programs exposing like his made-up stories about Trump collusion with Putin and the fixing of the election. The Ron Paul Institute also does the same. I think this is not just... Uh, This thing about Russia is not all that new. We've always seen this in North Korea. North Korea, you could, the news could say anything they want about North Korea in this country, and people believe it. Now, what's this? Well, one, I'll just give you one example. Is when that guy, who, uh, Kim Jong Un, uh, fed his uncle to the dogs, who tore him apart and killed him. Remember that story? That story came from a guy on a Chinese uh, blog who wanted to see what stories he could make up about North Korea and get believed. He just made it up just to see if it would get believed. Uh, it did. We hear the same stories about, uh, you know, there's People in Venezuela are starving and they break into the zoos and kill the animals to eat them. And the government there is killing people in the streets. So we just read the same kind of stories about Nicaragua right now. All these the corporate media are making up all these kind of stories. This is not this not really new, but plus you can go back in history and say, well, they made up the story about uh, U.S. ships being attacked in the Gulf of Tonkin, which led to the Vietnam War escalating, killing millions of people. They did the same thing, making up stories about Iraq having weapons mass destruction, and then, uh, you know, what's his, what's his face in the U.N. saying right here is like, whatever, this is going to kill us all if we don't do something. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and I guess none of this is really like new. It's just that now I think back then so many people was like, you know, it was like, hmm, I don't believe that, or I know they're lying, but now a lot of progressive mining people are just kind of going along with this anti Russia stuff. Uh, what they want to do is shut down sources that expose, what the corporate media wants to do is shut down sources that expose the lies and fake news that they try to feed us on to get us to go along with, to go along with their wars. So they want to control our sources of information so they can control what we think. 
Um, they want to make us think that the enemies of the national security state and the enemies of the leaders of the Republican and Democratic Party are also our enemies. They want us to go along with this this constant endless wars that we're now engaged in, which we are now been 17 years of continuous war, and there's no, it's not going to end. I figure people are going to go to college. It's like, I think some college, I think Beloit College where I went, they have something that the professors put out every year. This year, the 18-year-olds who entered college this is something that they never experienced in their lives. The next year is going to be something they never experienced in their lives was that the U.S. was at peace. Yeah. It's going to be next year, it'll be 18 years. The U.S. has been a constant war since, what, October 2001. This Russia phobia has also served to legitimize the U.S. surveillance state, the national security agencies, which got discredited after the so-called, you know, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq and the spying on us by the NSA. You know, when we found out about it, people were pretty pissed off. But now we're supposed to believe them that they're protecting us from the Russians. Uh, but this censorship of the websites is going to continue to spread in the future. That's why this, because a lot of people who don't like Trump are being led by these uh, right-wing anti-Trump people who, they're not any worse than Trump. Either way, we're, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, especially leading up to this election, it's going to be, uh, it's just going to get worse and worse, I think. And it reminds me, these, even the ones who go along with the anti, with the Russia phobia, eventually they're going to be hit by it too. And they're going to get censored. Even a lot of, you know, people like Bernie, well, Bernie Sanders already gets censored, but he still goes along with it. It reminds me uh, of that uh, quote from uh, Martin Niemeyer. Okay, first they came for, which I was looking it up today. How does that go? Do you know? First they came for the Jews. Socialists. No, they came the Jews. Socialists. Then Socialist. they came for the communists. I wasn't the communists. And they came for Catholics or something else. Uh, and then they came for me. You know, still like yeah. that. Well, I thought it said, first they came for the communists, but I was not a communist. But then I saw another one that said it's on the U.S. Uh, Holocaust Memorial in Washington, D.C. It doesn't say communist. It says first they came for the socialists. Which I guess, okay, well, they came for the communists, you know, we don't really care. But they came for the socialists, so we care. The exact wording, I think, was first they came for the socialists, but I was not a socialist, so I kept quiet. Then they came for the communists, but I was not a communist, so I kept quiet. Then they came for the Jews, and I was not a Jew, so I kept quiet. Then they came to meet for me, and there was no one to speak yeah. up. Yeah, I just think that's interesting. A different, even different versions of that have come out. Hey, I seen one version. I was <laughs> trying to find what they quote on the internet. One of them said, first they came for the liberals." Which, <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't come for the liberals first. <laughs> They're right here somewhere. That is, I think, kind of sums up what we face now with. Uh, a lot of people who are liberal-minded, who are against Trump, are being going along with this Russia phobia and their desire to get rid of Trump, and it's really going to come back, and they're going to regret that they went along with this. And so that it reminds me of this quote from Niemeyer. It's, I helped them get started going after people, and now they're coming after us. So on that, I think I'm going to this about how many ways
And the question is, is it, is it, is it true or not that, that Trump owes millions of dollars to the Russian oligarchs that they lent him to buy stuff? I don't know. You we'll hear find, that? We'll find that out. I heard Did it Trump lend, is it true that Trump lent millions of dollars? No, no, no. They no, lent it to him. Russian. Russian oligarchs lent money to Trump. Yeah. I don't know. No. <laughs> well, of course, I just also one of those things. Well, that's not that's not Russian interference in the elections. That's like a lot of this stuff. Follow up if I may. Uh, does it not disturb you just a little bit that we have an American president who is financially beholden? Uh, to a country uh, which, shall we say, has not always been a good friend of ours. Can you repeat the question? Does it bother me that we have a president who's probably financially beholden to a country? A country, country which has not been particularly a friend of ours. That's not a friend and of And do you feel that it amounts to a kind of a blackmail? <laughs> I think that all the people in Congress and the government are beholden to the U.S. corporations. And that's a big problem. The seen all difference then between beholden to a U.S. corporation or to your friendly banker down the block than being beholden uh, to the Russians? I think that U.S. corporations are more my enemy than the Russians. <laughs> I don't think, actually, if you think about it, what countries in the world are enemies of Russia or of China? Lithuania. The Democratic progressives are trying to throw out Pelosi. They don't want her as a minority leader. And uh, they're the progressive, are extreme left wing, and, and this country is sort of right. Do you think it's a good idea to, to have it controlled by the progressives? The, uh, the Democratic Party controlled by the progressives? I, well, I don't think they're very progressive, but I don't think either of those two parties represent our interests. I don't think they're progressive. I mean, most, the most American people would support free education for all. They'd support free health care for everybody. They'd support ending hunger, ending homelessness. They don't want to do something about global warming, but they don't do it. But they, you know, the, the Pentagon, they want $800 billion, $800 billion, which would solve all those problems Pentagon gets that, no problem, even from the Democratic progressives. When well, you say, how about, you know, food stamps for everybody, or a home for everybody? No, we don't have the money for that, sorry. I don't think they're progressive. Um, yeah, who's next? Uh, uh, you wanted, okay, I'm okay. With all the stuff that decide. you're saying that Trump is not in collusions with the Russians, what about the sale of that uh, property in Mar a Lago that recently went through the Russian o that was bought by a Russian oligarch for about twice the price. Ah, uh, I didn't really say that Trump is not in collusion, which I said there hasn't been any evidence. Really? Or maybe it's... There's, no, there's no evidence that Russia changed any votes in the election, right? No, nobody says Russia, what Russia did changed any votes. I don't know and yet. And they, nobody has said Russia know. hacked into such and such machine yeah. and changed the vote. Nobody said that. And what about so some... So I don't know, I mean, what business about some, deals with, I mean, comes in real estate. I mean, real estate people are like use car sales. And, all cool. and why is he president? Go see him. Fahrenheit 11.9. Because the Electoral College said, uh, yeah, if, there was, if we elected, we had a vote by popular vote, he wouldn't be president. We'd have, right. a, we'd have a different gangster. 
Okay. Hi. Listen, Stan. Uh, he pointed to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Andy just pointed to me. Thanks. Um, go ahead, Alan. Yeah. Hi. I'll get this water. Hi. Thanks, Stan. Um, I agree with you to the extent that all your facts were were factual, and I agree that it's not the Russians. I would say we substitute the CIA in there, or which has origins in the Nazi, Reinhard Gellin, Alan Dulles. You know, they the deep state plays us, and they misinform to divide and conquer us, right? So that we're, um, you know, like you can say the Democrats are wrong, and you could say what's the your question? Are wrong. What's the question? Okay, so the but the question is. What's the solution? I mean, if, unless we can agree on the same set of facts. Is there a way? I, I think it's to um, one. We have to regulate the truth in the media and the parties. And uh, just for okay. the fairness doctrine, used to say, act in the public interest. Don't put fake new, fake information. Well, I don't think you can. All you can, all you can do is uh, get our have more alternative media and I don't think anything can really be done to make any fundamental change and so there's a lot of people in the United States are organized and in the street fighting for some change and then from that mass movement there will come some third party that will actually represent the American people and but, what they want. But if they throw that out, hasn't happened. if they censor those, we can't let them keep censoring, you know, fairness and all the ones you listed have been censored. And the evidence is by the CIA, controls Facebook and Google, they started it. So if that's how they can censor it. Our, our CIA is not our friend. And we, have, we can agree on that. But they shouldn't be allowed to, to Big Brother shouldn't be allowed to kill all the communists in the media. So I would, I'm just asking if people... Well, they are censoring that. these things, but they are not, like, shut down. Well, they can be censored. If nobody sees them, they can't have the effect well, that they need to have, like Thomas Jefferson said. I mean, I know what they are so I could see them, but, I mean, people who don't. You are not I mean, today. They're not shut down. But nobody else sees them. Bring, like, Ellen, from bring, a, list of it, Ellen, bring yeah. a list of that stuff next week. Make a, make a list of what you're talking about. It is. If you can. I've been saying it. Nobody hears it. It's a, it's a constant struggle to fight against this censorship, and it's a constant struggle on their part to censor. And it all depends upon the degree of the organization of the people in the movement fighting for their rights. Did anybody ever hear about going to Baidu? Don Ritchie, yeah, okay, you, got, listen, you got a question back there. Um, Let's yeah, move on. You, said, you, you mentioned right-wing anti-Trump people uh, earlier in your speech. Uh, can you give some examples of, 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 of right-wing people who are anti-Trump? Oh, I said like the national security state. Oh, oh, I mean specific persons, individuals with names. Can you Clapper. Oh. Wait, wait, who's that now? Clapper. Clapper, okay. Yeah. Who's Clapper? James Former head of the national... Security. NSA, National Security, National Security Agency. Okay, Brennan, the former head of the CIA. Wait, 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 wait. Hold, hold on. Oh, Hillary Clinton. Okay. All right. All right. But I. All right. Now is Clapper? Is Clapper the current head of the NSA? Okay, so he's retired. Uh, he's on TV all the okay, time. Okay, okay, okay. Just a second. No, I'm, just, I'm just writing this down. You can, get, uh, you can go watch MSNBC and see who's on that program and who they interview. I'm sorry, I don't watch much television. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't watch. Same with CNN. Okay, so the other person you mentioned is the former, uh, a former head of the CIA. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, and then who's the other person? Uh, Clapper. 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 Um, hey, Ellen, let, let, can, can you let Stan answer, please, instead of you? Well, maybe they know. Okay. All right, all right. All right. Uh, if, I may, if I may add somebody, okay. Okay. David that's, K. That's Johnson. All. That, that's all. I was just oh, next question. Who has one? Anybody else have a question? We're going to rebut. Um, oh, Chad. Do you see any connection between all these lies that you've uh, been talking about, Russiagate and all that, and uh, the Kavanaugh hearings, the, uh, the accusations in the Kavanaugh hearings? Do you see any connection between, between 
Between this and the Kavanaugh hearings. <clears throat> Uh, not really. Okay. They're sort of like a Democrat Republican thing. Yeah. Kavanaugh's a put, uh, Trump person and they're anti Trump. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I'll talk about it. Over here. Well, uh, Ber Ber Bernie Sanders was known as a, like a sex offender. He was really yeah. macho. What Nothing was said about that? him. Why not? <laughs> well, that's the same as the, the uh, who is it? The Attorney General for uh, I think he's the vice vice chair or vice president of the Democrat National Committee. Is that a question? Why don't you save it for the rebuttal? Oh, no, that's not a question. Yeah, yeah. that's the rebuttal. That's why. Uh, who is the guy? He's uh, he's Ellison. in Ellison. Mi yeah, in Minneapolis. Yeah, Ellison. I mean, you know, you don't hear any of these break people break talking break about, you know, what he did to women. He beat up his girlfriend, right. They don't hear about what Kavanaugh did to <laughs> as a teenager, which I can't right. going to bring up what me or any of these other guys did as teenagers. Charlie, Charlie, you got a question. Yeah, yeah I thought I heard that Facebook has hired some um, right-wing... Um, <clears throat> Organization or think tank or something that's going to determine the veracity of the news, and and if, and if it doesn't pass their muster, they're going to book pressure on right. people to take it down. Is, is that the case? Yeah, Atlantic Council connected with NATO, NATO. Yeah. and now the National Democratic Union. Institute, and then and also the International Republican Institute. Those three. The National Review magazine, who James oh. Buckley was CIA. So it's, it's censorship. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's CIA. censorship. Yeah. Government yeah. censorship. Yes. Military. In the corner back there. Oh, uh, that. Yellow. Uh, uh, is got really it. not a Trump person because before that he was part of the Bush administration and he was selected to the one the, the court of appeals by Bush. So he's just a Republican. What's your question? Do you have a question? No. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't think Brent, I don't think like uh, Pompeo is a Trump person either. No, they're just yeah, yeah. part of the They were the man, though. He's a senator. General Loom here. He's a Trump. Charlie, you got a question? Yeah, I'd like Thank to ask you. Stanley this. Um, <clears throat> numerous European countries, including Lithuania, warned <laughs> the United States of Russian meddling in elections. The United States Department of Justice issued 13 indictments against Russian military personnel. <coughs> Because I identified, it's very easy on social media as to tracing the sources. Uh, 22 state officials in charge of voting, such as the Secretary of State from 22 states, reported Russian breaking into election systems. It's also been reported that software, and I know this from my own agency, because we monitor this, had to prohibit the sale of Russian software, which had proliferated the system to the United States. Now you come along on Saturday night and tell me there's no evidence of Russian meddling in American election affairs. <coughs> Is this your is this your assertion? Uh, I answered what you had said. Mueller indicted twelve or thirteen Russians. An indictment does not mean you have evidence. You just indict them. The evidence comes out in court. It will never go to court because they're all in Russia. So it's easy to indict them. And when Putin said, invite your people over to Russia to interview them, they didn't go to Russia to interview them. I wonder why. 
Should I have yeah, more 22? Yeah, they said that, but then it's all like, where's the evidence? There is yeah. no evidence. Well, they dropped I, it. It's like the same evidence as the video yeah. of Trump peeing or being peed on, whatever he smoked up there. There isn't any. It's just a made up story. Do you have any follow up, please? Do you have any evidence of how many indictments are brought by the federal Department of Justice against individuals of which there is no conviction? Do you know what the record is? 90%. You say they just did it frivolously. They don't. No, I didn't say they did it frivolously. What, what percentage of their indictments do not result in a conviction? I don't have. Do you, you believe that almost all of them are? Yeah. It's rare you can find one that doesn't result. It does not. It yes. does not result in a conviction. Okay. So? So uh, this 13 Why Can I make a question? Point. I think that and I don't know if you would have any evidence of this is that these are false flag the Russians are a false flag propaganda just like COINTELPRO just like psychological operations that if put out by probably both parties and the CIA, you know, it's you can make a convincing argument that the Russians did some stuff. And I've seen TV shows that, yeah, they could be. You can make anybody into a false flag operation and keep us at forever war. That's the idea of divide and conquer. So the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, William Casey, they've been using psychological false flag operations like the World Trade Center for a long time to keep us going to war. It makes them a lot of money and keeps us poor and under their thumb. So, so wouldn't you agree, Charlie, working for the FBI and being a secret agent yourself, that you know exactly how to do it? He is. He's a secret agent of the FBI. He does. He works. Way to out, Charlie. Is it a false flag operation? A false flag operation. Out of him. He's a, he's a, he's a so, agent. He told me himself. He works for the FBI union. Oh, yeah. He's an agent of the FBI. Yeah, right. He is. Don't think about the Russia story. The story is supposed to be that Russia helped Trump win the election by interfering in the election. That's what the story is supposed to be. And they bring up all these other things like Mar-a-Lago real estate. I mean, what's that got to do with fixing the election? Nothing. Or other things. It's like, what's it got to do? I mean, what is the exact evidence of Russia fixing the election? There isn't any. They haven't presented any. It's been like two years now. They haven't come up with anything. They bring up all sorts of other stories. All right, Andy, bring the, bring the college to order, please. Bring the college to order, please. Enhance your cow. Enhance your cow. <laughs> Stan, I got one for you. The most important question okay, tonight. Tim, Tim, you got a question? Yeah, the most important one of the night. The Do you think the Cubs will make me division oh, champions this year? Oh, bullshit. Come on, no. Red Squad. Yes, or no? Red Squad. I keep this You know, when you repeat a joke every week, it's not a joke, it's bullshit. <laughs> Stupidity to the man. You, you, you don't have the brain to do it, you joke. <laughs> okay, okay, let's go. All right, Charlie! Somebody knocked on you. One of my associates knocked on your door. And they said, well, you said, and he said, well, what are you up for? And I said, we're representing the Department of Justice, sir. We're serving you with a federal indictment. Would you take this as like just a not nothing kind of like visit, or would you take this as a serious? Wow! I mean, would you tell, you, would you tell your wife like, oh, nobody, it's you know? It's getting a little My daughter, who's Jewish, went to Israel and Palestine to see what the what life was like there for Israelis and Palestinians, and part of that trip 
she and the group went to this uh, child women's center for Palestinian women, and they gave them some money to help with their programs. And when they came back here, the FBI investigated them all, and they came and they investigated my daughter for material aid to terrorism. Wow. So, like, uh, yeah, and they was going to go to a grand jury but they all refused to go. I mean, this is the kind of, like, this garbage. Oh, you give money to a women's shelter in Palestine and all of a sudden you're aiding terrorism. Yep, I tried to give some yesterday and they won't let it. You can't give money over Facebook to uh, Palestinian <coughs> cause. And it, it's really... Yeah, I mean, basically you can make up any kind of stuff they want. We've already go to rebuttals. Is everybody through with their questions? <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, Sid. Sid, you got it. Sorry, sorry. Rebuttal, yeah. Oh, okay. How rebuttal. many people want to give a rebuttal? Give our give our speaker a hand. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sid, Sid's gonna be first. Give a show of hands here so we'll determine how much time everybody gets. No Keep your hands up so we can get a head count. One, two, three, four, five, count six, seven. Eight, nine, 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 through uh, different dictators, and we're complaining about Russia in trying to influence our election, which is nothing but a bunch of BS. Actually, right now as we're sitting here, the United States is trying to overthrow Nicaragua and Venezuela. It's in seven different wars in the Middle East and Africa, trying to overthrow governments. Why? Because it makes a lot of money selling arms. Also, the immuni immuni munition works. A number of years ago, it was about 41% of all the weapons in the world and munitions were produced by the United States. It's the number one export in the United States, is munitions. And we need constant wars. Yeah. What happened after the Second World War, Dean Acheson made a speech to a bunch of industrialists and bankers, telling them that if we don't have a war, we're going to go back into the Great Depression. Because in wars, what happens is you destroy tanks and you destroy planes and destroy other munitions and you have to replace them. So you don't have a shortage of markets because they're subsidizing the big um, munitions makers in the, in the world. He made that type of speech and the only reason that Roosevelt didn't succeed in actually overcoming the depression in 1929 because he didn't put enough money into the New Deal. And the so-called economic royalists at that time didn't want him to do anymore as far as taking out of the taking out of the depression. So we went into World War II and that's what got us out of the depression. So when they make all these remarks about other countries interfering in the, in the um, domestic affairs of the United States, like elections, it's all a lot of nonsense. For instance, when Yeltsin was running against the communists after the counter-revolution in Russia, the United States went there and they gave him a lot of money to the, to the Russians they didn't want the, the communists to come back into power. And they sent experts as far as um, 
propaganda in order to influence the Russian people to vote against the communists. And one of the things that they put forth and was very scary to the Russians was the Russians had 20 million people, or maybe 30 million people, during the Second World War. And what they told them was, if you put the communists back to power, we're going to have another war. So the Russians became very scared, and they voted for Yeltsin, who was nothing but a drunken slob that was making a lot of money. And then they gave the reins of power over to Gorbachev, and Gorbachev gave it to uh, Putin. No, you mean no, it was no, Gorbachev no, no. and Yeltsin. Yeltsin, no. Yeltsin gave it to Putin, that's right. I got it the opposite way. Well, anyways, if we don't have wars, the United States would be in the biggest depression you've ever seen in your life, would make 1929 look like a, a baby's party by comparison. So that's what we have, a government that's dedicated to keeping the capitalist system because the capitalists are making so much money now and they have this so-called neoliberalism and it's making the American people very poor and when you tell that to people, they don't believe you. They think it's nonsense because of all the bullshit propaganda they hear. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to thank the speaker for a, a provocative and interesting talk. I enjoyed every minute of it. I got a few points to make. The first one being I brought an article here that says that 63% of the white males voted for, that voted in the last election, voted for our president, and 53% of the white females voted for our president. So let that settle down in your mind. I also remember the head of the Communist Party, who I keep forgetting, in Illinois, uh, spoke, and a question came from the audience, what do you think of Russia? And he said, gangster capitalism, not communism. The third point I want to make is that my main criticism of the speaker is I didn't know the, where the hell he was coming from until we got to rebuttals. I'm slow, I admit it. And I, I admit that I'm slightly less skeptical than the speaker. I don't say he's wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Thank you. He did a good job. My name is Raj Patel. If a Trump is watching us, <laughs> he'll be very happy that we are happy here. We are having a good time. And he, he will he may think that country is doing good. And country is indeed going to be good. Uh, we lost election, not because of Russia, but our, FD, our uh, FBI director, because he screwed us. He did not do his job. And this is the same thing. We went to war in the Kuwait because government did not do a good job. And the same thing we went to war in the Iraq, government did not do a good job. So our government is working in a small thing, but in big thing they are not working. We should not be fighting wars around the world because they are not good at that. We spend lots of money on it and we confuse the whole world. And. Uh, if you're not good at something, quit. I mean, stop, stop fighting, doing again and again, same, same mistake, you know. And let's, let's think about, uh, I mean, such, we spend billions of dollars on FBI and CIA and national security. You <coughs> cannot get things right. You know, we don't know anything about North Korea. And what goal we want, they're unrealistic. I mean, we want to, we want to make more nukes. And we are asking you whether they cannot have a new. Yeah. Why not? Why not? If we, if we want to have it, you know, why why our our kids' lives are more precious than their kids' life? 
Okay? Yeah. I mean, only, let's be a realist, let's be a good citizen of the world and reduce our weapons and, and, uh, and be, be assured of people who do not have weapons that we take care of you. And we cannot do that. Yeah. And a principal, uh, principal problem we have with Israel. Israeli wants whole Middle East subservient to them and they want to dominate militarily and with the United States help. And that is a sad, sad thing. Okay, everybody knows. Israeli knows, Palestinian knows, American knows that solution to Israeli-Palestinian problem is simple. It can be it can be done in one day. And then they have to write probably for a month how to make it ready. But they can do it. But do you know who Israel do not want it? This thing works very well from the, for them. They can keep on milking America yeah. or all it is one. Okay, they will ask Israel, the, uh, Charlie Rose has asked Israeli expert, so why do you not, don't want to be, you know, solve this problem? Or second thing they ask them, okay, we can give complete security if you become part of the United States. Let's see, we have one more Israel is our state. They say, no, they don't want it. Because if they become a state, they have to follow our law, and they don't want to do that. Okay. Let, let, let us try to get a peace everywhere. I don't think we are going to, we are, we are not going to lose to China, but we are not going to win either. So let's, let's come to some, some sensible solution. Because if we do not do that, look, let me tell you one thing. America, we will be eating, we will be sleeping well, everything will be good for us for the next 50 or 100 years. Okay, I don't doubt it. We are not going to starve. We are, we are, we are, we are going to have better and better life. But that's, that's not it. But we will be interfering and making the rest of the world very, very miserable. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you very much for your uh, uh, speech presentation. Um, I thought it was spot on for the most part. Um, there was um, no evidence of Russian hacking. It was, in fact, a leash. And that was reported um, by uh, knowledgeable sources, people who made a good case and had evidence and uh, used logic. So the whole Russiagate thing was started out as a, a complete lie. And anybody who looked at it objectively would have thought that it, this would have been found out and it would have been dropped uh, the next day. But no, our establishment, and now it's mostly a democratic establishment, keeps the lies going forever, okay? Um, I listen to uh, the radio um, while I uh, drive. That's what I do for a living. And all day long, uh, not that I enjoy listening to these people, but uh, there's nothing better. I listen mostly to WCPT. Um, does, does, are people familiar with that on WCPT, uh, Progressive Talk Radio? Okay. And sometimes NPR as well. But anyway, so WCPT has Stephanie Miller for three hours, Tom Hartman for three hours, uh, Ben Jurowski for three hours, Norman Gold, okay. Norman, uh, Norman Goldman, these people, you would think they're insane. I mean, literally, literally insane. Russia, 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 Trump, 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 all day long, every day, 24-7, month after month. It's insanity, okay? But uh, as our speaker said, what does this do? It, it's a diversion from real problems. It allows the U.S. to keep on invading countries, uh, carrying on its wars, stealing from us every which way, all right? Um, so, lies are the, their modus operandi, and uh, <clears throat> that kind of gets me to um, this business with the uh, with the uh, Kavanaugh hearings. I've had the misfortune to have to listen to this all day long for the past several days, <coughs> and what I see is that evidence. Uh, excuse me. Accusations are presented as fact. Accusations, allegations. Uh, with, with no evidence. Just somebody said something uh, uh, to happen 30 years ago. Now, that's not to say that uh, sexual abuse is not a problem. Of course it's a problem. In fact, a lot of, there are a lot of problems that the Democrats very skillfully use, like uh, sexism and racism, and especially identity politics, well, that is identity politics, right? They use it as a tool to divide us, to keep us distracted. They are masters of, of this, okay? Uh, there are any number of reasons why anybody could object to Ka the Kav uh, Kavanaugh as, as the nominee. Are they talking about that? No. Yeah. How do you hear hardly a word of that? It's, you know, just pure... It, it's really sickening to me. 
So uh, the democratic establishment, I, I just have no use for. And, and, and I use those two words together because it seems like they are the deep state for the most part. I mean, the Republicans are, are worthless, and I, don't, let me get, don't get me started on that. But the Democrats, uh, they really sick of me. Four. Uh, my comments aren't necessarily for this thing today, but for a larger political picture. Uh, the title of this first one is Goodbye to an Ex-President. Uh, no, I'm going to have a, this is for the former president. I'm going to have another one for the current president. It will make, maybe it will last maybe another six months, maybe. Go by, goodbye to an ex-president. Oh, Obama, oh, oh no. Obama, don't you go. We will miss you so, okay. yes. Your days are pre as president are over, but your spirit will be here uh, when you go. When your, com your calm voice and your steady hand will be missed. And you can be trusted, even when I think you were wrong and I feel distressed. You were a pioneer and had to endure much as a pioneer. Your spirit and vision has been resisted. Your vision is what America needs to do and will be seen as something America needs to do. It will be welcomed. Goodbye and thank you. Did everyone forget that this guy, Obama? Mm. He needs to be mayor of Chicago. <laughs> it's a much harder job. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, this is a more recent one. Women have something to say. This fall, 2018, there will be an election. People will vote. Many women are running for office. I hear you say women don't have anything to say. Our country and our world can ignore the world of women. It's not just a world of men, it's a world of women too. It's not a matter of just more power or overcoming power. It is a matter of nurturing that we all may need, but have ignored or have forgotten. I remind you, we all came from a mother. And I would say to you, and I need to pay, we need to pay more attention to them in ours and for our own nurturing. Women's voices, when they are heard, will change our world and we'll be better for it. Okay. Ellen's, Ellen's up next. Hi. Uh, thank you for that. On that note, um, I am running for mayor. My name's Ellen Corley, and uh, I'm going to run, not because I think I can win, but just because I think we all need to. And uh, I'm 63 years old and just mean enough and uh, tough enough to, I uh, used to be a teacher, I want to apply, you know, teach the world <laughs> how to play fair and do right, and uh, that's what we need is integrity and ethics and government, and that's, I see on both sides, um, really, we got two corrupt parties, uh, it works perfectly for the deep state, um, they've got us divided and conquered, and the little bit of organizing I've done, I've worked for the last three years with uh, the Chicago Alliance Against Racist Political Repression, uh, trying to put in a Civilian Police Accountability Council, uh, and you, I got kicked out of the court last week just going down there uh, asking a simple question of a, can I have, why does this PR person for the um, people defending Jason Van Dyke murdering somebody for the bag, 16 shots, um, why do they get to have, spend our taxpayer money and uh, defending unlimited PR for, you know, to make sure that the police never get held accountable for 
murder and torture and uh, you know wrongful imprisonment and so they uh, the judge says go talk to the sheriff I say rips my thing I'll say get off my floor I'll arrest you you know I uh, I wish he did really you know it's um but I know that judge and I it, it's you, you know debutante colonial dame goes to prison acting asking for justice I think that's what it takes is um, we got to get in the headlines, right? We got to break through. You know, how are they going to? Um, how are we going to get somebody? I hadn't thought of Obama. Uh, I tried to ask Bill Murray if he would run. Uh, he's a friend of Luke's, went to high school, and he he said he'd think about it because I think he could win. He's a guy. He likes the Cubs. That's what people care about, you know, um, right? And so, but you know, I, it's uh, about it, right? But then, you know, there's that or me, and it, it's interesting. Speaking of the Kavanaugh, um, I've been on the radio uh, all week. I held my Facebook Live and watched it, started talking, um, turned it on myself. You know, it really is going public, finding my voice. Uh, I think that it, I had watched, I started putting it up on the Jason Van Dyke hearing that I'm putting, same deal. You've got a stacked court system. You've got a judge and a prosecutor and a defense all working together. Uh, you know, to make sure that their corruption, you know, continues. Nobody questioned the system, the systematic injustice. Them, you know, suppressing the communist news, you know, violating the First Amendment. The, the Supreme Court justice they're putting there, I heard Gorsuch say, Gorsuch and Kavanaugh went to the same high school, same bullies. They're both from the Federalist Society. And the Federal Society was started by Scalia and, and Bork after Nixon was, you know, who will defend me? You know, we know White House had stolen the Democratic people's things. They go, Bork will do it. Now all his people, second generation, are put in there. Um, that's why I'm on the news and few people might hear me pointing out, this is who Kavanaugh is. This is, it is not just that he's a rapist, it's that his job, he's put in there, he was there with Cheney at 9-11, orchestrating the bring down of 9-11. Okay, and we, until we get a 9-11 truth movement demand going, and it gets on TV, nothing's going to change. I saw on NPR, on NPR in Colorado a white junior leaguer like myself handing out 9-11 truth. That's what it's going to take, right? The women, the Democrats, the Republicans, getting honest, being accountable to holding truth to power and demanding only truth to power. We've got to be activists, organizers, and we all have to get in their face. They don't get to have a coup d'etat, which is essentially what this is. It is controlled by both sides. Russia is not the issue. and They're all false, you know, um, what issues, right? And it, I, I do find it horrifying that that they don't handle the truth. Not even at the International Socialists. But um, anyhow, everybody run. All right. Is there our speaker now? Well, one thing bothered me with what she said. She called Kevin a racist. I, I watched the hearings. I didn't see anything about rapist. a rapist or racist. Rapist. Rapist. He's not a rapist either. It's just an allegation. He hasn't been convicted of a. He's not a rapist. Anyway, uh, I want to talk about this uh, Joe McCarthy. Uh, he, had, he was talking anti, uh, talking about the communists in the U.S. government for about five years, and then they had the communist. Uh, un-American uh, hearings, and that went, led to his downfall because he was making all these accusations against uh, people, against the U.S. government, and uh, trying to ruin a lot of uh, people in Hollywood, and and he talked himself out of, uh, at the end, he, he just, it was his downfall that is the hearings. But anyway, uh, talking about the Trump, the witch hunt against Trump. <coughs> The special counsel, the, the uh, Mueller uh, investiga investigators, they don't care. They, they've been investigating for months and they found no collusion, no collusion at all. Yeah, anyway, there's no collusion. So uh, uh, it, uh, Trump, Trump is a doer. He gets things done. He's a businessman. 
the economy is at, at an all-time high all the way around, unemployment and everything. He, he, uh, he stopped Kim. Come on, let's let's give him give him a let's give him a, let him speak. He stopped Kim. Kim was talking about nuclear nuclear weapons and uh, a missile coming to the United States. He stopped that. He started, He's like a pal of uh, Trump now, and Putin is a pal of this too, which is good. I, I think it's good. Iran. He's, he's trying to stop this um, nuclear uh, deal that uh, Obama did and. And uh, Iran is an exporter of terrorism. And uh, talk about ISIS, you, you don't see these uh, terrorists chopping Americans' head off anymore. If they did, Trump would do something about it. Obama didn't do anything. What did he do? You, what did he do? He paid for him to cut out the head. Uh, he has made a lot of accomplishments. Can't let the speaker is do. A lot of accomplishments. I, I, I got a list. I got three pages of I can read them all, but I won't. He, 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 now, the Dems, the Democrats, they're witch hunt. Maxine Waters, she says, if you see any Republican senator, attack him, attack yeah. him, wherever. What is this? She, she should be in jail. Uh, ju the judicial nominees, they don't give them uh, a due process. The, the accuser is supposed to have evidence. And, and you don't just... They don't uh, do evidence. You don't, I didn't interrupt you, lady. They don't do evidence. Uh, and Helen. the other thing, the, 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 uh, the Democrats accuse of Trump of being deranged and unhinged. He, he is, I, I might watch all his, uh, his meetings, his press conference. The guy has a good mind. And uh, open borders. There's a billion, there's a billion people who want to come to the United States. We have open borders. Do, do you want these billion people just to walk right in without being vetted? Or, or uh, can, can we afford to have a billion people? And that would lower the standard of living all the way around. Impeachment. Oh, come on. They, they, they're talking about the Democrats. They're talking about impeaching Kavanaugh if he gets in. And they want to impeach Trump. I, I read the Constitution. I have it right here. You can, you got to have high crimes and misdemeanors and treason, treason, treason to impeach him. He did not commit treason. It's the Democrats' hysteria because in the 2016 election they lost the election. It reminds me of the Salem witch hunts, the Salem witch hunts, and the McCarthy uh, excesses. And. Uh, they, they have all these unsubstantiated attacks, and Lindsey Graham gave a great, great speech last week. He said, if the, if the Dem we're going to fight back. We're, we're not, we're not going to approve, approve of their nominees, and we're going to stonewall them in the future. <laughs> That was a very interesting speech. People are strange when you're a stranger. Faces look ugly when you're alone. Women seem wicked when you're unwanted. Streets are uneven when you're down. When you're strange, faces come out of the rain. When you're strange, no one remembers your name. When you're strange, when you're strange, when you're strange. Is that a critique of my That's the doors. <laughs> 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 All right, somebody, somebody was... That's a compliment. <laughs> somebody was talking about breaking on through. you got to break on through. To the other side. To the other side. <laughs> you know, the day destroys the night, the night divides the day, try to run, try to hide, break on through to the other side, yeah, break on through. We chased our pleasures here, dug our treasures there, but can you recall the time we tried? Break on through to the other side. Everybody loves my baby. She got, she got, she got, she got high. I found an island in your arms, country in your eyes, arms that chain. 
eyes that lie break on through to the other side. Made the scene week to week, day to day, hour to hour, the gate is deep, deep and wide. Break on through to the other side. Hey, break on through to the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. All right. All right. This is the end. My only friend, the end. No. Uh, all right. Well, this is a very interesting, uh, very interesting lecture tonight. Very timely, considering that it was about um, the man in the White House. Um, I just, um, I like, uh, I, uh, I, I really like what Stan said about the, um, about the, the stuff about the internet. And this is a very serious problem because the federal government is um, cracking down. Howard said, um, "There's a few things that Stan got wrong. First of all, Stan, you said that the masses of Americans are not part of the resistance. Well, maybe not in an active way, but most Americans are against Trump. Most Americans are against Trump being president. And uh, look at the polls. Trump's never had approval ratings of above 45 percent. All right, now, which means that uh, now, if you look at um, uh, Stan, you said that the resistance doesn't complain." about the, 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 the opponents of Trump, I'll just say. Don't complain about the Electoral College, GOP vote suppression, or gerrymandering. That's not true. Um, uh, a lot of them do. I mean, it depends on the individual, but, but a lot of the same people who, are, um, who oppose Trump also uh, would like to get rid of the Electoral College. And for, uh, for example, uh, former President Obama has advocated uh, a constitutional amendment to abolish the Electoral College. On the subject of vote suppression, Hillary Clinton is kind of a late convert to that. But she actually does, because she, she didn't oppose vote suppression in 2016, not out loud anyway, but she does oppose it now. Uh, and there are plenty of Democrats who oppose gerrymandering, uh, at least when it's done by Republicans. Now, um, now the reason for the... Um, now, I just want to say about the subject of the censorship of, of Google, Facebook, and Twitter having these kind of like, kind of like um, uh, partisan commissars uh, to oversee them, and make sure that they're, make sure that all of their all of all of their work is politically correct, um, uh, according to you know according to their standard. Um, this is actually, it's not a result of some kind of suspicion about Russian hacking. This was actually purely a Republican thing. The Republicans called these guys, they called Mark Zuckerberg, the head of, the head of Twitter, uh, in on the carpet and, and interrogated them and, um, and, and accused them of liberal bias and in order to, to placate uh, them and, and head off some kind of, some kind of federal law uh, censoring them, they uh, went ahead and for this uh, so, supposedly voluntary self-censorship. Now, um, now on the subject of Russian hacking, since I mentioned mentioned it just now, um, the um, I guess the FBI and you can help me out here if you want, Charlie. As I understand it, the um, the uh, FBI can, uh, the the uh, Robert Mueller investigation concluded that. Hackers working for the uh, Russian military intelligence (GRU) uh, published private information from that that they got by hacking the Democratic National Committee's um, uh, server, and they then published this information, uh, which was kind of embarrassing to the Democratic National Committee, and I and um, and and definitely caused the, the the actual information was the the revelation that, that the DNC was not neutral, that they had been supporting Hillary Clinton against Bernie Sanders. They'd been supporting Hillary Clinton from the very beginning while pretending to be neutral, uh, which I believe is wrong. I think the DNC should be neutral, but it did have an effect because a lot of people who had been Democrats said, to hell with them. I'm not going to vote for the, I'm not going to vote for Hillary Clinton and maybe not for any of the Democrats because they did that. And um, so Losing those people, and, um, you know, because the election was so close, of course it had an effect. And I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that that Republican vote suppression in the red states had the same thing. It, it all had an effect. It, any one element was missing, that would have changed anything. And, and I just heard an alarm clock go off, and I guess that means my time is up, right? Yeah, okay. All right. All right. All right. Adios. 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 Um, hello, hi, my name is Ellen. Um, 
First of all, I want to speak, thank the speaker. Um, I thought that was an excellent presentation. And um, I've heard a lot of not so good presentations here, to be really honest. And, and I thought this was excellent. Um, it, it brought up something, uh, a topic which, which is really not talked about very much. I think people have gone overboard in saying that there is collusion um, when I don't think there is compelling evidence. I know that um, there, I think there was some evidence that caused these um, Russian military people to be indicted. Or what were they? Russians? Uh, what were they? And the Russian intelligence people. Uh, I, I, that, that, that's not like beyond reasonable doubt necessarily. I mean, it, it, you know, I think you do need some evidence, but it doesn't have to be particularly compelling probably to get an indictment, not particularly compelling. Um, and you know, these are the same agencies that told us, or that contributed to telling us um, that there was uh, weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. And I'd like to hear somebody tell me how these intelligence agencies have changed and have improved so that they no longer uh, you know, do that kind of stuff, come up with that kind of BS like they did with the weapons of mass destruction. Nobody yet has told me that, and nobody, nobody talks about it. And I'm not sure that the level of confidence that they have in any kind of collusion or, or Russian involvement is any greater than what they talked about with the weapons of mass destruction. So somebody please tell me how these agencies have changed it and gotten for the better. Um, now, um, as opposed to, the, to, you know, but still, I welcome the Mueller investigation, and when they come up with something really great, I'll be happy to be open to the evidence. Um, there is, by the way, a theory that Hillary's emails weren't hacked, but they were instead leaked. I think Ted Aranda may have mentioned that. I'm not sure. Um, okay, um, some things that, you know, I really find um, disturbing is the whole thing about Facebook and how... Um, it, 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 what I've read is that, that you know they've hired this outside agency or company, um, and probably conservative company, to determine what is fake news and what isn't. So then, what they determine not to be fake news, they are going to um, put a lot of pressure and maybe fines and penalties on those people to remove it. So it is a form of censorship, and the fact that you know Facebook is one of the top one or two sources of ways that people get news. Um, this, this is of great concern. I don't get my news through there, but other people do. Um, I'd also like to say, like as he was saying, because people are talking about things like Trumpgate, their Greg Palast, who's a journalist, he, I think he's in the UK right now, he is trying to sue the government about cross-check, which, it, you know, it's, it's a program where they're accusing um, them of kicking a lot of um, people, uh, legitimate voters, especially black people, off the voter rolls who deserve to be there. And I, and he's trying to raise money for this lawsuit, so I advise you to check out his website. Um, and But, you know, just be aware that these things um, are going on, that we have elements right here in, in our own country that are trying to um, um, alter um, inappropriately alter the, the, the votes. Um, and, you know, 21% um, of the blacks in Tennessee and Florida are disenfranchised from voting. They have felony convictions, um, whether yeah. right or wrong. And so permanently, for the rest of their lives, if they stay in that state, they're disenfranchised. So there, there's a lot of issues going on. Um, and okay, I, and, and by the way, I just like to say it's also places like the credit card companies. Remember, they 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 blocked people from donating to WikiLeaks because they said um, they would wouldn't let anybody donate to WikiLeaks um, using their credit cards. I don't know if that's still going on, but it was before. Yeah, the, this talk I felt was kind of disjointed a little bit, so it didn't sort of went all over the place. So, but um, um, it seemed like the general theme was, along with uh, uh, side side trips, that uh, uh, oh, the uh, there's no proof that the Russians interfere with the 
2016 election. So yeah, that that's right. Gave, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that gave the um, presenter, Stanfield Smith, uh, somehow some backing to a lot of other claims that were all over the map. Uh, but uh, uh, Don uh, Ritchie, my friend, uh, went over some of that. that clearly, um, if you don't, if you want to discount uh, whatever Robert uh, Mueller does because of uh, things from far back in his past, and I'll have to research a couple of things that you mentioned, but uh, um, yes, the intelligence service of this country let us all down by <clears throat> being misused by George W. Bush. Um, he cherry-picked uh, information to claim that uh, Saddam Hussein actually had weapons of mass destruction, and that led to the Iraq, uh, the, the uh, illegal Iraq invasion. Um, and yes, we do have a, a terrible um, problem with the excessive military spending and uh, this empire that we're running. Um, and, uh, but uh, to simply discount the information of uh, uh, that uh, these Russians were indicted and that uh, there was a substantial amount of evidence, some of it was redacted, um, that um, actually traced back to their origins in Russia and named them uh, directly. Uh, seems clear that they were at tampering, or at least trying to tamper, with the election machinery. Now, it was established that they got into the uh, uh, voter rolls uh, database in Illinois, of all places, um, and uh, uh, that uh, they did do things like actually steal uh, those emails. And uh, those were passed on to WikiLeaks, and um, they were released. One of the uh, things that happened was that uh, a large release occurred the same day, I believe, as the, uh, uh, the Trump tape where he was um, uh, self-advertising uh, himself basically as a sexual molester, uh, claiming he grabbed women by private parts. Um, uh, so that distracted from it. Um, the voter suppression by the Republicans was duly noted, and um, that uh, probably was the main contributor to why um, Michigan was lost. Um, we're not sure about Wisconsin, uh, but we know that a whole lot of ballots were um, problematic uh, um, and it, it might have something to do with Republican shenanigans. Now, there's never been a proper audit of the three states that lost the election of Hillary to Trump. Um, we would have liked to have had an audit. Um, the absence of evidence that there was actual tampering with the votes which probably wouldn't be Russians because they weren't on, um, they, they may, you know, they probably weren't able to get into the actual databases of the election counts. And we don't know, we may never be able to, to, um, uh, to figure that out, but uh, the provisional balance, the fact that people's votes were suppressed, uh, the fact that there were like 100,000 votes in Detroit, Detroit area that uh, were evidently by Af African Americans that supposedly didn't vote for president, even though they they picked up and filled out ballots for everything else. Something very um, um, dastardly, <laughs> something very evil happened there. And it was a re Republican-run state. Um, now, uh, just, uh, you know, whether or not it was Russians or not isn't that important. You've just got to face up to the fact that Republicans are evil. You've got to vote them out. <laughs> they've they've steal, stolen votes, whether they're under the influence of, of um, Russians. Uh, Trump is obviously under the influence of something that Putin has on him. And uh, I'll just have to leave it at that because I ran out of time. All right. All right. Very, very, very I'm Jan Budar, and uh, I wanted to say something about the Kavanaugh business. Um, I don't think that Kavanaugh is being, uh, oh, he's definitely being uh, 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 excoriated for his behavior as a teenager. I, and um, I think this is a warning to young boys that you can't just do anything you want, boys will be boys is no longer the rule. And, um, but he's also, as Ellen mentioned, a member of the Federalist Society. And there's about five people on the Supreme Court that are members of the Federalist Society. 
if you realize the number of Supreme Court justices that graduated from uh, high tone private law schools, um, that is another factor. I think you should all watch Michael Moore on Democracy Now! when he um, went through his experience as a teenager with guys like Kavanaugh and how he was tormented by these uh, uh, owners of the world or the what we call masters of the universe or whatever they think they are. And I think that um, uh, the the, the so-called trial of Kavanaugh is not just about his sexual misconduct. It's about who he is and what he represents. Um, I also want to say something that has bugged me for years and years, and uh, it's part of the reason that I would not dream of de voting for a Democrat, and that is when Wellstone died, and they, there was a big funeral for Wellstone, and it turned into a political rally, which was 100% appropriate for Wellstone and who he was and what he represented. And the Republicans shamed the Democrats for that political rally, and the Democrats said, oh, gee, I'm so sorry. We shouldn't have done that. And they were apologetic all over the place. I thought that was really a disgusting display of the Democrats. They were challenged by the representatives because they did something really appropriate, and they were shamed for doing something really appropriate because Wellstone was a political animal. And then I just wanted to say one more th reason why I don't vote Democratic, and that is uh, uh, Hillary Clinton trashed Honduras. The, 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 the Honduras problem was on her watch and on Obama's watch when there was a legitimately elected government and our government supported a coup against it by the right wing in Honduras and many people died and their elections were. You know something, Ellen? It's really tough to be, even be in the audience when you're in the same audience. Um, so that's all just stuff I wanted to say, but um, I wanted to get the stuff about Wilson off my chest. The whole thing about Judge Kavanaugh this week <coughs> brings to mind something that we all should be concerned about. At one point, I heard that Judge Kavanaugh, after 35 years, still had his high school calendars available. <laughs> the point is now, if you're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and a young person, this stuff's going to stay with you forever. You could be at 40 or 50 years old, and they'll know exactly what your posts were back then. Even though you didn't delete it, it's going to be around. We are in a surveillance state, and it's not the government that has all the information about you. Mostly it's private corporations. Down in Downers Grove, there's a little known building or a company called AXC IOM, Exacom. And they're one of the biggest data aggregators from the internet. As a matter of fact, if you go in there and you pay the right amount of money, you can find out the dossier on almost any individual in the world that they've collected credit card records, change of addresses on, and all that. What we really should be worried about <coughs> is maybe not so much the aggregation of information, but what's done with it. I just recently finished off an audio book about Edward Snowden and also some of the other comings of the NSA and signals intelligence. And even though I disagree very humanly with a lot of what Ellen's got to say about the conspiracy theories, one thing is known. The world is getting a lot smaller. You cannot <coughs> have your youthful indiscretions like you used to without them coming back to haunt you. Now. 
whether I think Kavanaugh is right or wrong or whatever, the mere fact that he was 15 ought to take something into consideration. 17. 17. Well, but what should he take into account? Here is what. Here is what you really need to learn about it. Kavanaugh at least had some records, and uh, the FBI is doing some investigation. But I can tell you, the rest of us ought to take really good notice about our surveillance society, what we put out on the internet, and what we what we need to do. If you behave yourself and you're available, anything, if things are going to make public fine. Anyway, I've had my say. Thank you very much. Hey. 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 Well, for once I didn't have to screech. Uh, my name is Margaret and um, I would just like to clarify something about uh, boys will be boys. I think um, um, Je uh, Jan was right when she was saying that that's no longer an excuse because what happens is in terms of sexual behavior we say boys will be boys, but girls are responsible for determining what sexual behavior goes on. So, little girls who, I, I mean, and it goes as far as, um, and, and this was actually boys, there was a bishop that said that the seven-year-old boys that they were molesting were, um, were uh, uh, seductive. Oh, so, it was their fault. Yeah, it was their fault, absolutely. Yeah. So um, I think we've done the same thing with um, girls and women, and, um, and it's, you know, how you dress and why were you on the street then, and, yet, and just a whole list of things that blame the victim, and that women are responsible for these sexual things. And then, you know what, just don't do anything. You can do it at the end. Um, that, um, and, and the boys can do whatever they want because, of course, they don't have to govern their impulses at all. Okay, Andy. Yeah, Andy, then Charlotte. And then stand. I have a couple of comments that uh, nobody else has touched on tonight. Um, number one, uh, the American military now considers the threat of climate change and the flooding of the coast year after year getting worse as the number one threat to American society. It's not terrorism. And the reason the military knows that is that climate change is real and international terrorism that hate America because we were attacked by Muslims, that's a fairy tale. <laughs> There's no big Muslim group out there waiting to come here and, and attack America. Um, and General Smedley Butler wrote the book War is a Racket after 1935, and we've reached the point where our annual trillion dollar a year budget for war and breakables where corporations are constantly selling stuff to the military, go off and break it, bomb, uh, destroy, and then get more orders. It's a prescription for the destruction of the middle class and the destruction of our country. Uh, also, this whole thing about uh, worrying about Kim Jong-un or uh, any other leader uh, getting a nuclear missile and firing it into the air at the United States is a total fairy tale. Since 1935, uh, not 1935, since 1985, missiles tipped with nuclear weapons launched from land have been obsolete. Missiles are obsolete for delivering nuclear weapons. If you put a weapon on a missile and launch it in the air, you've got 20 satellites up there that will pinpoint exactly where it came from, and that country will be turned into glass in a short order by our submarines. So nobody in the right mind is thinking about uh, delivering a, launching a missile. Since 1985, nuclear weapons have, uh, up until 1985, leading up to that, nuclear weapons went through the same miniaturization as 
DVDs, cell phones, music. You used to have to sit in a symphony orchestra way back when, when there was no electronics. Today, you can have beautiful music through headphones, <coughs> through a small compact thing. Well, the explosive power, the, the 12,000 pound bulk of a weapon that was dropped down Hiroshima, that blast power has been condensed down to something the size of a football you can carry around in a purse. In 1985, an article was written about uh, what any country could do with a dozen of those things. It was called a, a 12 bomb war. One dozen compact, portable, football-sized nuclear weapons loaded onto the backpacks of motorcycles and driven into major cities. Any country with nuclear power plants, incidentally, you drive them near six nukes, six major cities, and set them off, and that country is uninhabitable for humans. So for we've been living a fairy tale for since 1985, thinking that we have to defend against nuclear weapons coming in here. It's a total fairy tale. As I said, a dozen properly oper operated, uh, now we have cell phones. A dozen properly outfitted motorcycles with properly uh, equipped with cell phones can eliminate virtually any country on earth. As the author of the article said, paraphrase the old uh, advertisement from a motorcycle company, Kawasaki lets the good times roll. There you go. Any country doesn't have to spend billions on missiles, planes, submarines. You bring them in in little motorcycles, the trunk of a car, if you wanted to. So, the other thing, uh, the climate scientists have been wrong. The climate scientists have been wrong every year with their projections. There's articles all over, every week they release a new updated article about how fast the ice is melting at the North and the South Pole. The container ship just sailed through the North Pole where the ice used to be. So uh, there's no debate. Their, their computer models have been wrong for the last 30 years. It's happening faster and faster and faster than they thought. Most of most experts now, hundreds of them, give us four years. They say we need a World War II mobilization in the next four years. But the little kids that are here now are going to be living in a different planet by 2060. Barely 40 years from now, it's going to be unrecognizable for uh, a human environment. It's not two or three hundred years away. It's happening right now, and we have to address it. So that's all I have to say on that. Thank you. All right. Well, let's thank our speaker. Once, really, that was well done, Stanley. I mean, you speak, Stanley. I'm thanking you for a very well prepared presentation. Uh, I'll wait till you're done, Margaret. <laughs> Are you guys okay? All right, I'll be eclectic. Seriously, I thought that was an excellent presentation on uh, positions and articulated positions, which perhaps may be controversial and not disagreed upon by some. I'll be eclectic here. Uh, I'll focus on uh, free speech. You've talked a lot about it. I just finished an article. Um, the, the thing about free speech is not only speech which is of value is protected under the law. Not all speech. Uh, the, um, I, I was involved in putting together social media regulations as well, so the private sector is coming along. Also, censorship is, is, is restrictions imposed only by a government entity not private sector, such as a company on its employees. No one has free speech once they cross the portal of the workplace. You cannot say what you want or offer your opinions to the employer or speak about the employer to the public. So they're very well restricted. Now the one thing where you are, are I'm sorry, so you're entirely wrong, is that I've involved, been involved for many, many years with the Independent Voters of Illinois, and we do election advertising and endorsements and it is not anything goes regarding adverse political advertisements it has not been that way for many many years there are very stringent rules governing it the identification of the amount spent where it comes from and where it goes believe you me and we depend upon two or three lawyers in our organization to see to it that we're in full compliance with the election laws. 
Now here you have a campaign, a federal election, and I've been involved in many campaigns, in federal campaigns, but if you're in a federal campaign, especially a presidential one, and you're visited by the representatives of the foreign government, and you know full well that anything you accept of value from that end, from those individuals is prohibited, and what, and you, and you meet with them, and you make arrangements, and so forth, and then you say, well, this is perfectly allowable. No, sir, it is not. Anyone involved in the slightest bit in a federal election campaign knows that it is strictly and totally prohibited. The basic thing, I always ask when somebody do these things, when we, when we discipline people we'll say, okay, you had a meeting, you had this meeting, and then what did you do next is the question I'd love to ask when you got them on the stand. What did you do next? They did absolutely nothing. Did they pick up the phone and call up one of those in the Federal Election Commission? Did they call one of those intel agencies that you guys are belly aching about and report it? No, they did not. That is not allowed. Anybody in the right mind knows that's what you have to do. Now, the other thing you got to do, and if these guys don't tell me they don't know what they're doing, I'll tell you who they had a meeting with. They had the meeting about the worst miscreants in the world are these Bolsheviks out of Russia. And I mean it. Anybody who knows that knows that these are the guys who destroyed the socialist ideal and the enterprise. These are worthless criminals. And you meet with Bolsheviks and think it's like, oh, like nothing? Oh, it, no one from that part of the world. They know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes. And they say you're meeting with the with these here. Now finally, last of all, I've heard some complaints about the intel agencies of the United States. Oh, we got something wrong 25 years ago, therefore they're no value. Oh, this and this and that, pick them, this and that. Let me tell you, these people have done a very good job of keeping us safe and secure from the bad guys. And I highly recommend that you go see something like a federal employee you may know and just say thank you for what you do. Or call a government agency and say thank you for diligently protecting us Facebook from these the evil forces at work. Somali babies, thank Somali you. babies, oh, thank babies. You. <laughs> Like All right, let's let's stand at the last word. Stand. Our attention, please. Our speaker on the last word here, and what nobody mentioned tonight. Go see Michael Moore's movie that's in the theaters right now. It's an, ed it's an education about what we're talking about here tonight. Thank you. Okay. Yes, I saw that movie. What'd you think of it? He gets see, it's like one of these anti-Trump crazy people. <laughs> okay, Stan, let's, we got five minutes to get out of here. Five minutes. Uh, okay, there's a, talking about Democrat people who want to follow this, in that website WSWS, they have some articles on CIA Democrats running this year about, not the, the women, but how many of the candidates they're putting forward now are connected with the national security states or are in the military? It's pretty interesting to read. That. What website? WSWS.org. To put in CIA Democrats, they have a series. I guess what Don was saying, yes, I over... DD left already. I, I did overstate what I said about... They didn't say anything about... Or they don't have any, they have no problem with gerrymandering hundreds of thousands of people losing their right to vote and so on. Or the, or the super delegates or corporations buying elections. Some of them do, they do complain about it, but they don't really do anything. Spend a lot more time talking about Russia when they got real problems about election interference that they don't do anything about. Uh, I remember there's also an interesting story, I don't know, about these two Russians who were in Britain who poisoned somebody. I don't know, what, two minutes? Four. Oh, okay. uh, it's, 
more or less like Russia phobia thing. You had them come in, they poisoned somebody, I forget who, and they had them coming out of the airport in, in uh, London. And they're, they're walking individually down the hallway like this. Like this long. And they're the only one in the hallway. And it has a picture of each of them coming down the hallway. No, separately, because I mean, there's no one else in the hallway, just one at a time. And they also had the time of when they came in the airport. And it just so happened that both of them were walking down the hallway in the same spot at exactly the same second. <laughs> we can't have two people walking down an empty hallway showing one person, but they both, the same second, they're in one spot. That means like okay. you and me are standing here at the same second. All right, you got to keep moving, Stan. I mean, it shows how, you know, uh, how do you just make uh, this stuff up? That one, yeah, obviously that was photoshopped. It was in the Wall Street Journal later, but they took out the clock to so make it look a little more reasonable. Uh, this story, if you want to read about the hacking in, or the leak in the U.S., uh, the, elect, the Podesta's emails at Veterans Intelligence Professionals, Professionals for Sanity goes into that for a fair amount. That's the name of that group. Ray Montgomery. Yeah, as for censorship, this, this is not private company censorship uh, by Facebook and Google. They are cooperating with the government, doing what the government tells them to do. The government is telling them what's fake news and what's yeah, not fake news, yeah. and what they can print and what they should yeah. they should suppress. That is not private. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's government censorship. And even if it was private, which it is not, it is still censorship. So, and the fact that we don't have freedom of speech when we go to work somewhere, that is also censorship. So I don't know why you're defending censorship. That's kind of, I think, a little... <laughs> well, I'll do one more thing. There was something in RT News about, it didn't show it in US News, I saw, about they had these children in this program working on the computers practicing hacking and they said it took them like 10 hours to hack into electoral systems in different states. Kids, like 12 or 13 years old. So that's, uh, that's on RT News. It's uh, called U.S. Midterms Hacking Children. It's, uh, you could probably find it. All right, have a look out, Andy. Okay, that's it for Saturday night here. We are adjourned. We'll see you next week. And all of you that are listening, uh, we're a little late tonight. Please make you back as fast as you can.